it is time for everyone to meet an ICBM, to understand our nation's approach to this important weapon. Here is the missile being raised on its test stand at the Missile Test Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida. This is Atlas, being prepared for flight test in 1957. But why 57? Why wasn't this being done in 56 or 55 or even 54? Why are we so late? Has satisfactory progress been made once we did intensify the program? It is the considered opinion of most missile scientists that good progress has been made. Exceptionally good when one considers the complex effort it takes to produce something as strikingly new and different as an ICBM. A missile like Atlas looks simple and clean, just a hollow shell with fuel inside. Count. Atlas is on its way. During 1957, three such flight tests were conducted. The first firing in June, here shown, carried Atlas up several miles. At that point, the missile veered. Tried to recover. then fell over and plunged toward Earth. It was deliberately destroyed while still in the air. The ball of fire in the sky points up a valuable lesson. Perfecting missiles is a difficult business. The second test in September was nearly a repeat performance of the June test. Once again, Atlas left its launch platform cleanly and moved up straight and true. Again, however, there was a malfunction and the missile was destroyed. The burning gases the mark of failure to the layman are not necessarily the mark of failure to the scientist. He learns from failure as much as from success. In the June and September tests, 90% of the test objectives were accomplished. These tests enabled engineers to redesign Atlas for a third attempt. The last month of 57 now, and the third Atlas test, once again a countdown the blast furnace roar of engines. Again, a steady release. Again, Atlas reaches for the airless ocean above the Earth, and this time makes it. The missile is doing everything expected of it one day soon will be a deterrent added to the Air Force's manned bomber potential for peace. Actually, the ballistic missile program puts us on the threshold of space travel. The same propulsive unit now powering Atlas could boost a lighter body like a satellite into an orbit path around distant planets like Mars or Venus. Yes, man is dreamy dreaming of horizons beyond the dimensions of Earth. What started as weapons of conflict can develop into vehicles to satisfy man's insatiable craving for an understanding of the universe in which he lived.